In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the Maxwell-Boltzmann curve, otherwise known as the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve. And we're also going to use the collision theory in conjunction with this curve. This is a visual representation to explain how temperature, concentration, and catalyst can affect the rate of a reaction. The first thing that you need to understand is in, say for example, a gas mixture, okay? Just a whole lot of different gas molecules, all of these molecules are constantly moving around, okay? Ignore the, the blue coloring over there, just pretend it's in a empty space. Gas particles are moving around in all different directions. However, at a specific temperature, so let's say, I don't know, 30 degrees Celsius, at a very specific temperature, the kinetic energy of some of these particles differ from those of other particles. So say, for example, this particle over here could have a kinetic energy of 10 joules, whereas this one over here could have a kinetic energy of, let's say, 11 joules. And this one over here could have a kinetic energy of 9.5 joules. Obviously, I'm just making up these, you know, these values. I just want you to understand that they move at different speeds, slightly different speeds, these different particles, which is then associated with slightly different kinetic energies. And the speed and kinetic energy of most of the particles lie probably in between one of these values, the average kinetic energy of most of the particles. So just keep in mind that not all particles in a specific mixture have the same speed and have the same kinetic energy. So what two scientists did is they represented this visually on the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve. So what they did is they plotted energy, the kinetic energy. So let's just add in here, this is the kinetic energy energy of the certain particles and the y-axis represents the number of molecules or number of particles for a given let's say gas sample at a specific temperature so this curve represents the energy of all the different particles or molecules at a given set temperature so let's pretend again 30 degrees celsius so what this curve tells me is that some of the particles have a very low kinetic energy most of the particles, so up here, let's say that measures the highest amount of particles, have an energy, a kinetic energy sort of in between. But you do get particles, these particles over here, that have a higher kinetic energy. So it's important to note about the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve is that the area underneath the curve, so if I had to measure this area, this whole total area under the curve, that gives me the total number of particles in the system. So as I said, majority of the particles have an energy that is somewhere in this range over here. But you do get some particles over here, this many particles that have a lower energy and you get this many particles, the area under the curve that have a high energy. Another thing that's important to note is this over here, this value of energy over here is known as the activation energy over here. So whatever this value is over here. Now remember what the collision theory says. We said that particles of reactants must collide with each other for a reaction to occur, but for an effective collision to occur and therefore a reaction, remember collisions must be effective in order to result in a reaction. So how do we make sure that the collisions are effective? Well, only particles with kinetic energy that is equal to or greater than the activation energy will collide effectively. So back to the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve. Can you see over here, let's say the activation energy, this is zero, let's say this is 10, 20, 30, 40, let's say the activation energy is 50 joules. Can you see that all of these particles, remember the area under the curve represents the number of particles, all of these particles over here, they do not have enough energy that is equal to or greater than the activation energy. So therefore, no effective collisions will take place. So no reaction. So it is only these particles that I'm highlighting in yellow, only the number of particles represented by the area under this part of the graph have energy. Their kinetic energy is equal to or greater than the activation energy only this part over here. So how can we make sure that we have more particles that have enough energy? How can we make this part over here, it looks green on the screen, the part that I highlighted in yellow, how can I make that bigger? What would your suggestion be to make that bigger? Well, if I had to take the activation energy, which is currently at 50, and if I had to move that to let's say 30, if I had to move that over here, can you now see that all of these particles have enough energy that is equal to or greater than the activation energy. So what did I do to the activation energy? I moved it from 50 to 30. 
Therefore, I decreased the activation energy. And what do you know that I can add that decreases activation energy? A catalyst. A catalyst decreases the activation energy. So that's why a catalyst increases the rate of the reaction because we have more particles that have enough kinetic energy that is greater than or equal to the activation energy. I hope that's making sense. So remember I said we need to use the collision theory along with the curve to explain how temperature, catalyst and concentration affects the rate of the reaction. So we briefly touched on the catalyst. Let's just take a look at it again. So a catalyst decreases the activation energy. And what that means is it lowers the minimum kinetic energy required for bonding. Okay. Now the analogy that I used is let's pretend the pass mark for physical sciences is 50%. Only this amount of the class can pass. Everybody else, all of these people over here, unfortunately do not pass the class. All these people here. However, if I lower the activation energy, if I lower the pass mark, let's say to 30%. So if this is 50 here on the x-axis, it makes sense that this is going down 30%. Do you see that now more people, let's choose a different color, more people can pass the subject. More particles have enough energy that is equal to or greater than the activation energy. That increases the number of effective collisions per unit time and that increases the rates of reaction. Remember, when you state this in your exam, it's in terms of the collision theory. You have to mention number of effective collisions per unit time. It has to be that entire string of words. Okay, so what happens if I increase the temperature? Well, in situation number one, let's say this particle has a kinetic energy of 10 joules, and this one has 9.5 joules, and this one has 11 joules, and this one has, let's say, 9.8 joules, something like that. If I increase the temperature, I am increasing the speed of the average speed, the average kinetic energy of all the particles. So they'll all increase. So let's say this one is now 12 joules and this one is now 13 joules. And this one is now, do you see it's all going up by two? Let's say 11.8 joules. And this one is 11.5 joules. So the average kinetic energy has increased. Imagine that in terms of the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve. What do you think happens? So on average, all the particles have a higher kinetic energy for a higher temperature. This is actually what it looks like. So lower temperature, you can see over here in green. Higher temperature, you can see over here in red. And I know that this confuses students because some people say, ma'am, why is the peak of this curve higher than the peak of this curve? Why does the peak shift downwards? What you need to understand is if I increase the temperature, okay, the total number of particles stays the same. So I have one, two, three, four particles in total here at low temperature. I have one, two, three, four particles here at high temperature. So the area under both curves must be the same. That's because the number of particles in the system stays the same. But in order for my average kinetic energy to shift, can you see that the average, the peak over here, where the most particles lie is further to the right than the average over here where most particles lie. And that makes sense because at a higher temperature, all the particles experience an increase in kinetic energy. So the curve basically needs to shift to the right. But in order for that to happen, the peak here must be a little bit lower so that it can the graph can be a little bit higher here on this side so that the total area stays the same. And if it doesn't look like it to you, just trust me it is. If I had to work out the area under the low temperature curve and work out the area under the high temperature curve, it will be the same. Okay, so what is happening over here is that because I have a higher temperature, the curve has shifted like that, the peak is lower. Let's say that over here, and they've drawn it in kind of here. Let's say that that is the activation energy. Oh, I've drawn it in a little bit skew. That over there is the activation energy. Can you see that at a lower temperature, only these particles over here have energy that is greater than or equal to the activation energy? Only those that have highlighted there in blue have energy that is equal to or greater than the green line, the activation energy. But if I increase the temperature, all of these particles have an energy, under the, the area under the red curve, have an energy that is equal to or greater than the activation energy. And that fits in with my temperature argument. Okay, so 
increases the collisions per unit time, increases the number of effective collisions per unit time. And that's just because there's more particles that have a kinetic energy that is greater than or equal to the activation energy. What happens if I change the concentration? As you all know, concentration is measured by taking the mole divided by the volume. Okay, so just like that, the number of moles, the number of particles per unit volume. So if I increase the concentration of a solution of liquids, there are more gas particles per unit volume. So basically, it's something like the same volume, same volume. This would maybe be low concentration versus you increase the concentration. That would be higher concentration. OK, and what happens then is I have more particles. And remember, the area under the curve represents particles. So can you say for can you see for the green curve, increased concentration, the peak is much higher. It's not that the curve has been shifted because there's no temperature change, but the peak is higher, which means that for the green curve, the area under the curve is a lot bigger because there's more particles in the system because concentration is bigger, so number of moles is bigger. And that just means, if you take a look at where the activation energy is, the green curve will have a larger area underneath here, more particles that'll have energy that is equal to or greater than the activation energy, more effective collisions per unit time, so higher rate of reaction. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Please subscribe for more physics, chemistry, math, all of the above. I'll see you in another lesson very soon. Bye, everyone.